<coughs> uh, we have a little pandemic poem here from Friday, October the 22nd, 2021, which already sounds a little dated, I bet. It's anachronism number 3,399. Not only dated, but at the time, while it was very you know, controversial, it's still something that I keep hearing about, even in past tense, uh, talking about, you know, the purpose of government and whether they should force upon us such things. But it's called jabs. In high school, which relatively, uh, which relevantly included junior high, where I went, the kids, the adolescents, the almost adults, the ones that had the wherewithal to put such things off into the future and didn't immediately, once riled up, scuffle. Whether in class, in the hallways, at the lockers before, between, or after class. During class, sometimes, the ones with a look toward the future would make an appointment to take care of their business behind the Circle M during lunch at the end of the day after classes were done or sometimes mornings before classes even started or during classes that were skipped just for these such occasions such occasions i didn't mention also during lunchtime i never did participate except when grabbing my corn nuts and seven up for lunch which i did now and again sometimes every day of the week at the circle lamp and upon leaving the store or before entering it and i'd I'd see an inordinate amount of dust sweeping across a lot through the gas pumps or hear a bunch of noise like there might be a basketball or football game going on, only of course there wasn't. I'd peek around the southeast corner of the small building, see a few guys standing up, going in and out of sight behind the brick wall of the north side or backyard of the Circle M. And once or twice I slowly crept along the east wall of bricks until I nearly got to the very end, and then I'd see it, the odd-shaped circle of boys, hands up in the air, rooting on one or the other of the two who remained in the open space, the center of the misshapen circle. There might be a bloody nose or two, there might be a tackle down to the gravel for a moment, but when they were up and dancing around in the open space with their hands up in the air, the jabs they managed were hesitant, juvenile, I'd say now, and frightened. They looked afraid, and I can't remember ever seeing a punch that ever landed on flesh. In the mere moments of experience, I had catching glimpses of the fights behind the Circle M. It gave me some hope, even when it came to a real fight. The dance was about fear and intimidation more than anything else. The intent to literally hurt, to cause pain, seemed to be on nobody's minds, but the massive amoeba of boys cheerleading, egging on the temporary foes, excuse me, making room for the fight's existence. And now there's another part separated by a little set of asterisks. Here. I learned, there's three parts to this, by the way. I learned this week that I'm due for a booster vaccine shot. In fact, anyone who got the Johnson & Johnson shot was officially recommended to get a booster shot no earlier than two months after getting the first one. I got my jab over six months ago, and only after I had my own bout with the monster that gave the world the pandemic within which we've so awkwardly meandered aimlessly about now for what will soon be two years. I remember getting the shot right in front of my nutritionist's office door, only because I recognized her name, never met her. Our appointments were, of course, via telephone. I'd recently been diagnosed a diabetic. And that was during my first bout with um, the coronavirus. The mood was a bit sedate, but there was the distinct look and feel of celebration, particularly on the faces of the staff who did such a wonderful job hearing us inside and getting, or hurting us inside and getting us to the right places at the right times for our individual jabs. For a week, the area where the needle went into my arm was incredibly sore, as if I had somehow managed to overwork just the portions of the muscles in the near vicinity, or had been punched by a person with inordinate strength as hard as they could punch directly over where the needle jab had recently occurred. And the segment uh, slice shows that this is now the third segment. For nearly two years, I've enjoyed the luxury of having a very special person in my life. 
The only problem has been he lives in the southern hemisphere of our great planet, and thanks to the pandemic that began quite around the same time that our relationship began, we've yet to even meet in person. Which is not to say we don't talk daily and at length. We don't have most of the joys and spats and friskiness says and repartee that most anyone who enjoys a more proximal thing of this sort would presumably normally enjoy. Before things went haywire, the plan was for him to come visit what would now be some 18 months ago. Thanks to travel restrictions as well as financial restrictions, we have yet to be in the same room with each other. While I don't believe in karma, this part of history, this part of the story is particularly karmic, given how much grief and fun I'd poke at any friend who over the years would regale their long-distance relationship stories. But that's a digression. Today, special because today, my very special person just got his second vaccination jab. The embassies are still taking visa interviews for trips, or are still not taking visa interviews for trips to the United States in that faraway place where he lives, but it cannot but surely bring that day significantly closer and makes for a wonderful reason to celebrate nonetheless. How long ago was this now? I would say. Jabs. Jab. Jibberty jab.